Hi, everyone. Thank you for being with us tonight. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, reducing waste and recycling right. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Adams Lanham. I am the Community Engagement Librarian at the Barrington Area Library. So that means that I do programs with and for the benefit of our local nonprofits. Um, so Go Green Barrington is one that I have partnered with a number of times, and I'm excited to be able to do that again. Um, in just a moment, I will, I will ask Jennifer to speak to all of you. Um, before we do that, a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, we are recording tonight's program, and I will post it to YouTube as soon as I can. Um, so if you know folks who are interested in this and weren't able to make it, we should be able to, to have a copy they can view, or if you want to show it, if you want to watch it again later, you'll be able to do that. Um, because we are recording, I do ask if you can um, please leave yourself muted and turn off your camera. Um, we will be, um, Kate has agreed to answer some questions for us at the end of our time together. So if you do have questions, you can put those in the chat um, and you can put them in the chat whenever they occur to you. It's set up so that all chats will come directly to me. Um, and then I will pose the questions to her. So if she's talking about something and you're afraid you're gonna forget if you wait, go ahead and put it in the chat when the question occurs to you. And then I will compile them all and, and lay them before Kate and, and she will help us out. Um, so with that, I am going to turn things over to Jennifer Lucas of Go Green Barrington. Hi everyone, uh, again, I'm Jennifer Lucas and I'm one of the leaders of Go Green Barrington. I'm very thankful to the library for partnering with us on this uh, program. And I'm grateful to all the organizations out there who have spread the word. Um, Daughters of the American Revolution, the Rotary, uh, League of Women Voters, it's really helpful. As when I was letting in people, we already had 55 listening tonight, which shows a concern for the environment. Uh, I'm sure there'll be others joining us in a few minutes. Uh, Go Green Barrington works to increase awareness about environmental issues through programs and projects. Uh, and you know, sometime when you have the time, please check out our website at gogreenbarrington.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And before I go on, I should tell you that just like when you're at home and you're watching television and the commercials are really loud and then the program is quiet, well, I tend to be too loud. So um, when we get to our program, you can probably boost the volume, but I'm too loud. Um, but before we get started, before we get to the heart of the program, I wanna recognize the high school students who have volunteered with us on highway cleanups and with the One Earth Film Festival. And some of those students now are working in the incubator class at the high school, which helps promote entrepreneurship. And they're starting a recycling app to try to answer questions. So look for more information on their Instagram account, which is called Race to Recycle with the number two rather than T-O, Race to Recycle on Instagram. And now tonight, we are very fortunate to have Kate Carney with us. Uh, she, is in the, she is the Community Outreach Coordinator for Cook County's Department of Environmental, Environment and Sustainability. She has degrees in conservation and environmental science and she's worked in environmental education in three states. She shares our passion for reducing waste and we're very lucky to have her with us for the start of Earth Week. So I encourage you all to welcome Kate and we look forward to the program tonight. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I have lots of great information to share with you today. So I understand that the Cook County Department of Environment and Sustainability is a very big mouthful, but we are here to provide support to making um, the entire county more resilient and thriving and improving the life of every single one of us and also our natural environment and everything else that lives here with us. So we do this in so many ways, including discussing and providing information about waste reduction, and waste reduction and recycling right, which is what we're going to focus on here today. So to start off, let's just get a bigger, a better picture of household waste. 
here in the United States. According to the EPA data in 2018, almost 300 million tons of waste was generated here in the States. About a quarter of it, just under a quarter of it was recycled, about 12% eight... to generate electricity, but half of that waste went into landfills. Now of that 146 million tons of waste that was generated and sent to the landfill, about half of it, just under half of it, was recyclable materials that could have actually been put into our curbside recycling or through industrial and business comp uh, recycling, and it could have actually been recycled into something brand new. So just to give you some perspective, we're talking about almost 34 million tons of paper in 2018 went into landfills as opposed to be turning into new paper. And those numbers have steadily gone up every year. The total amount of waste in millions of tons just from 2015 to 2018 in a three year span went up about 50 million tons. So we are constantly generating more and more waste here in our country. Now, if we wanna narrow it down a little bit and look at Cook County, we all here generate an average of 8.2 pounds of waste per household per day. So every day, each of our households are putting eight pounds of trash into in or waste into our trash cans and a, just under two pounds of recyclables per day per household. And again, we can look at what the composition of our waste here in Cook County is. You can see almost a quarter of it is paper. So again, we have a lot of really great opportunity to reduce the amount of waste we're sending to our landfills by doing simple things like recycling. Now, when we put that trash in our trash can, garbage truck comes and picks it up, it has to go somewhere, right? And it goes to the landfill. So this is a picture of a landfill in Virginia. I actually took this picture we were very high up on the landfill. It was multiple um, feet high and I was in a low point and it just goes there to hang out. But not all of us really understand what a landfill is outside of knowing it's just where our garbage goes to live. So let's look at the way a landfill works. A landfill is highly engineered. A gigantic hole is dug in, in a place that we're gonna site the landfill. And then it has multiple layers. And those multiple layers do a lot of things. They help to keep the pollution in. It helps to help keep protective layers between that trash and our groundwater, which we're really lucky here that we get our, our drinking water from Lake Michigan, but there's many, many communities across the country that depend on groundwater in order to get fresh drinking water. So we really need to make sure that we're protecting that for the health and safety of all of us. We also wanna make sure that it doesn't go flying away and it doesn't contaminate soils. Um, if people, people that live near landfills, they wanna make sure that the smell stays there. And we also are mainly, our main protections are against the two main byproducts of landfills. And they create two things, one called leachate and one called methane. Now a leachate is a liquid. So it's when it rains on the landfill or that half-filled bottle of water that every single one of us has probably put in a trash can at some point, when that opens up and the water goes trickling through, or when other liquids that have gone into the landfill, things that could be potentially dangerous to us, chemicals and cleaners and paints, all of these things, when the trash gets compacted so they can fit as much as possible in the landfill, those things are inevitably going to escape into the landfill. And so as those liquids trickle through all of these millions of tons of waste that are in these landfills, they collect a lot of those chemicals and the other pollutants and it becomes this very, very toxic and dangerous liquid. And if that were to escape into the soil or the groundwater, it could cause some pretty serious harm to the environment and also to us and to wildlife. And so 
there's a lot of protections put in place in a landfill to keep that from happening. The other thing is methane. And I know many of us have heard of methane, um, most notably uh, from farm animals waste. It is a colorless and, um, and very smelly gas. It's highly flammable and explosive. And when it escapes into the atmosphere, it's actually a greenhouse gas. And so the greenhouse gases contribute to heat that would typically and naturally go back out into space. And so we're kept, we're keeping that extra layer of heat and it's causing major, major changes to our climates and to our environment. So there's those two main things, the leachate's been collected and it's cleaned and then it's sent through a water filtration process. And so it goes through at least two cleaning processes to make sure that it's not going to harm the environment and methane is collected. Some landfills are able to then use that methane to generate electricity, which is pretty amazing, but not all landfills are set up for that. And so if you're ever driving by a landfill, and you see that flame, that's them trying to get rid of the methane in a safe way. It's better than just going into the atmosphere, but um, not quite as great as making electricity out of it. All right. So not everything has to go to the landfill, right? We have three really basic R's that we can use to make a huge difference. Those three R's can make a positive impact on our homes, on our pocketbooks, on our neighborhoods, and to the world at large. So there's so many different layers to why using our three basic R's can really make a positive impact. And we always want to frame our our view of waste with this waste hierarchy, where we have this upside down triangle. And that top one, the biggest one, the first thing that we always want to do is we want to reduce. So first and foremost, we just want to make less trash. We want to make purchases that help us to make less trash. And we want to just make decisions that are going to send fewer things back out into the environment, especially when they're things that can contribute to dangerous scenarios like leachate and methane, right? And then once we can't reduce, we've reduced what we can, we want to try to reuse things, we want to give things new life. And then finally, our third option is we want to use that third R in recycling. So let's talk a little bit more about reducing. So by reducing our trash, we're not only sending less to the landfill, but we're also able to use fewer natural resources. And this one really amazing example is by using a reusable grocery bag, which is something that most stores give them away, vents give them away. Somehow we always end up with more and more of these reusable bags, right? But if we're not using them and reducing the number of those plastic bags, it doesn't really matter, does it? So when we can use that reusable bag, which is usually bigger and stronger than the plastic bags we would get from the grocery store, we can, it can really add up to a lot less waste. So if you look at this graphic, you know, if it's two bags per trip, you go in a couple times a week, they didn't even have room for the number of bags that, would that you would accumulate over the course of an entire year. So by using that reusable bag, we're doing a lot of things, including using a lot less oil, which is what we make plastic out of, and also sending a lot less to the landfill. So another really big thing that we are throwing into our landfill is food waste. And so we wanna also use that reduce mentality to reduce the amount of food waste that we are sending to the landfill. So about 40% of all food in the United States is wasted. It is, we didn't think ahead when we were at the grocery store, that is from commercial um, kitchens. And there's a lot of money that can be saved, not to mention a lot of landfill space that can be saved by really thinking about our food um, purchasing and different ways that we can really stop wasting 40% of that food. Now, if we're thinking about that, so yeah, we don't wanna send that 40% to the landfill, that's for sure. We also wanna be spending money on food that we're not ever gonna eat. And so we can do lots of really easy things and we could even, for, a, for an average household, we could save, what, close to $400 per year 
just by working together and um, thinking ahead. All right, so food waste can not only be sent to the landfill, it can be reduced, but we can also compost. So there's a lot of ways that you can compost. Your community might have a Comp municipal composting program where for part of the year they'll actually pick up that those food scraps from your house and they'll compost them for you. You could if you have a yard and you want to do composting at your own home that's an option. So there's really simple you can find between your greens and your browns and you can end up with a really amazing um, amendment for your soil which you can then stop buying those uh, chemical fertilizers and using that compost that came from your kitchens essentially and you can use that to really um, boost the, the growing power of your own plants. All right. Now reusing. So yep, we got the reusable grocery bags. That's a no-brainer. We've got our reusable water bottles and, a, and avoiding single-use plastics like water bottles or straws. There's lots of, or, or silverware. There's lots of different things that we can reduce, reuse there and reduce. But we can also get really creative. And I love this one where, where they used milk jugs and turned them into a really cool way to rainbow organize your colored pencils. But there's a million ways we could use those, right? So we can, when we are making a purchase, if it's something that it's, we need it, we can maybe think beyond that first use and how we can put it to further use in our homes, in our kitchens, in our bathrooms. We need a place to store all those hair ties. Maybe we use a jelly jar, right? So lots of different options for reuses. And then we finally come to our recycle. So we've already eliminated as much extra waste through our purchases and through the way that we are creating and generating things and we're reusing what we can. And then it comes to a point where sometimes it just has to go in the trash. So we can make the choice of, is this an item that can be turned into something brand new instead of using a new natural resource? Things like metal and paper and glass, or is this something that definitely cannot go in our recycling bin and it needs to go to the landfill? So let's talk a little bit more about what we can recycle. So we're all, here because we care about this stuff, right? I care about recycling deeply. I think that this is a wonderful way to reduce the amount of trash that we're sending to the landfill, but there's limitations. Unfortunately, just because something is made out of a material that can technically be recycled, it doesn't mean that we can put it into our recycling bins at home. Recycling bins at home. And that is our typical paper, plastic, metal, and glass. And in many municipalities, we can even put those cartons in, even though they have a plastic or that waxy feeling, feeling film on them, actually are really high quality of paper. So check with your municipality if they're accepting those. And we're gonna stick with items that are generally found in our kitchens or bathrooms or laundry rooms, things that had something like food or drinks or shampoo or laundry soap. Those are the types of things that we can put into our recycling bin. We're also really lucky that there's a really, really wide variety of paper that can go into our recycling bin. Everything from corrugated or cardboard boxes, which I know all of us have a lot more, especially given the last year of really having to think smart about how we can safely get the things that we need. So those, paper, those, those cardboard boxes should definitely get broken down and put into our recycling bins. But we can put more than just that. We can put smaller, thinner paperboard like cereal boxes, our newspapers, our old school papers, all those types of things. But we can even put the shiny ads from the newspaper or from the mail. So there's a lot of different kinds of paper that we can put into the recycling bin. This is especially important because paper comes from trees. Trees do a lot of other amazing things for us and essential things like clean the air, clean water, provide us with food and shelter and wood and animal habitats. And so we want to make sure that we are using this, those paper products in the smartest way we can. 
paper can only be recycled about five to seven times before it is non, uh, the, the, the fibers aren't usable any longer, but we wanna make sure that we get them in for those five to seven times. So we'll recycle our paper. Glass includes only glass bottles and jars that come out of our kitchen. So we have um, lots of kinds of glass in our homes, but we can't put like a window pane into our recycling bin because it's a different kind of glass. And our recycling processes are set up for a specific kind of glass, which is the glass that is used to make these um, bottles and jars. Metal includes only cans, so only steel or tin and aluminum cans. And we wanna do that because the recycling can only be turned, those recyclable materials new if there is an end um, or, or, or market for them. So things like a bike frame technically can be recycled because it's potentially made out of aluminum. It doesn't work with the process that our curbside home recycling goes through. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then our plastics. So with all of these items, we want to make sure that there, there were a material from our kitchens, from our, from our bathrooms, from our laundry rooms. We want to make sure that things other than paper have been rinsed out and mostly dry or completely dry before we put into our recycling bin. We don't want to put half-filled water bottles in there. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and we can put all the kinds of plastic if it's clear or a solid color other than black. Again, the black plastics cannot necessarily be sorted in the um, sorting process, so they won't necessarily make it to the end of the line where that plastic is going to be turned into something new. All right, so there are some things that no matter what, we cannot put in our recycling. They, some of these things can be recycled. For example, styrofoam. South Barrington has, an, has a program where you can take your styrofoam to a special bin and they get it recycled. But if we put it into recycling and any other of our curbside recycling, unfortunately, there isn't that market for it through that type of recycling. So it has to go to a landfill if you can't take it to a place like Whole Foods or to South Barrington's collection point. Plastic bags, yes, they're plastic. Yes, they are recyclable, but we don't want to put those into our recycling bins because they can actually ruin the machines that sort the, re the recyclables at, um, at the MRF, which we're going to talk about. We also don't want anything with a lot of food contamination. Think about a cardboard pizza box that has grease on it. Do you think that you could easily or would it be very difficult to wash that grease out of the paper without ruining the paper? Yeah, it's going to be difficult. And the same goes for the sorting and recycling process. Shredded paper. So if you're shredding your documents at home, that's a great way to be safe. But those shredded paper, that shredded paper can't go into your recycling bin. It's really just going to end up everywhere. So um, I would recommend utilizing a community um, shred event because those materials go into that special truck and they go to a special recycling facility. So if you want to protect your, your, your private documents and also recycle those private documents, we have to utilize something like a community shred event. Also clothing. So uh, are definitely recyclable, but they're not recyclable through our curbside recycling. We want to donate them or find another organization that is going to recycle those textiles. And tanglers. Tanglers are one of the biggest problems that recycling companies find because much like those plastic bags, they get all tangled up in the machinery and can cause a lot of problems. Not to mention a lot of these materials are not recyclable within our Main Street curbside recycling program. So while a metal hanger is technically a metal that could be recycled, the sorting process limits some of those factors for us. Now, 
where does the recycling go? That's a really important question. And it goes to a material recovery facility, or I really like to call it MRF because it just sounds fun. So at the MRF, it's everybody's recycling that is in that truck and that is in that from that company that goes to the MRF and it goes into a gigantic pile, which you can see in the first picture. From that gigantic pile, a series of different conveyor belts and machinery and a lot of manpower, a lot of human power, go into sorting those materials into the different types of materials. So everything from cardboard gets separated from newspaper, gets separated from school papers, to number one plastics get separated from number two plastics and the different kinds of cans. And so there's a very, very fine tooth sorting process. And then they get put into those big, huge cubes you can see in the background of the third picture, and those are called bales. And that is the material that is then going to go on to a manufacturer that will turn that material into something new. So this machinery is the reason why we want to make sure we're not putting bags into our recycling, that our recyclables are not in bags, that we're not putting those um, tanglers in here because all of those machines need to keep going if we want to keep our recycling process going. We also want to make sure that we're not um, putting things in there that we just really hope they'll recycle, because if there isn't a market for those recyclables, they're going to go to the landfill. So we can help to reduce the cost of our recycling by putting just the right stuff in there. All right, so we have these guidelines that are good reminders of the different types of things that should and should not go into our recycling. Remember that a uh, plastic milk jug, once you rinse it, you can put the cap, cap right back on and the whole thing will get recycled. But we also don't wanna put things that are heavily contaminated in there. We have a really, really great guide for different types of waste on our website. So if you go to cookcountyil.gov and search for the Green Guide Library, you can find lots of information about how to dispose of, of different types of waste. Like I have this can of oil paint, oil-based paint. Should I put this in my trash or do I need to take it somewhere? Just a spoiler alert, you need to take that to a special household hazardous waste drop off but also other ways that you can reduce and reuse and then get to that all important recycling. And also just because it's still so relevant, we do wanna remind you that our PPE, our gloves and our masks and the things that are so essential to our safety right now should never ever go into the recycling. Those are not recyclable items unless they are in a very specific specialized program, but in our curbside recycling, we're not gonna put those in there. And we also have our Conserve Cook County Pledge. And so I invite all of you to check out our pledge. You can tell us that the ways that you have and currently do and the things that you're going to start doing to help make Cook County a just better and cleaner and more environmentally conscious place. And it's everything from I'm changing to an LED bulb to I'm going to use public transit for my commute to reduce my carbon emissions and everything in between. So I do encourage you to check that out. We have a, um, a Twitter page at Cook Enviro and we would love to see your um, I took the pledge tag us and we'll be happy to uh, help elevate just how great you're doing. All right, now finally, if you have any questions specifically for me, we're going to talk about some, but you can always reach me at katherine.carney at cookcountyil.gov. Cook but there's a lot of other really amazing resources available to you right now. You can check out the different recycling, the recycling directory at swank.org that you can put in your location and it'll tell you specifically where you can go near you to recycle specific items. Also Go Green Barrington, like Jennifer said, they have lots of events and other really good resources that you can um, check out. And also just check in with your municipality. There's a lot of 
other services available that are specific to your village or your town that you should find out about because they might help you to do your reduce in the first place. So yeah, let's see about questions. On mute and on, on avatar myself. <laughs> Um, and we did have a few things that came in. Um, a couple things first to start with. Um, mm -hmm. Just when you were when you were talking about um, you know stopping things from getting into the groundwater. Actually, mm -hmm. a lot of people who live in our area are on well water. We don't oh. necessarily get Lake Michigan water. So, oh, yeah. so especially important there. Mm -hmm. um, we have someone who pointed out that you could add a fourth R of refuse. When Absolutely. You, you yes. need extra stuff. Yeah, or that fifth R of rot. Oh, rot. <laughs> for composting, rot for composting. I like that, that's good. <laughs> um, we have someone who says Prairie Land will accept shredded paper if you bag it separately. I'm assuming that's a waste provider in the area. Okay. Um, Lake Zurich, which is not in our library district, but is the next town kind of east and a little bit north of Barrington started styrofoam recycling program. Excellent. So, also shredded paper. Um, animal shelters will often take that for using for litter and for, you know, places for the pets. Okay. So that is a nice segue into another question. These aren't in the order that they came to me, but okay. you mentioned that. We have somebody who, um, what do you think of using shredded paper for um, comp in putting it in your compost bin? Absolutely. That is a, it's a great piece of the puzzle. So making sure that you have a balance between those food scraps and grass clippings and shredded paper and those types of things. It's also a really great use. You're right about that. That's great. Um, I also remember reading a few years ago that you can put um, pet fur mm -hmm. in the recycling. And I don't remember if it was a green or a brown. Oh, yeah, in the composting. Yeah, same thing with our human hair. You can put that in there, too. There we go. <laughs> For those of us that are aging and losing some hair. <laughs> Constantly. So I think we I think we know the answer to this, but garbage never gets sorted, right? Once we put it in a trash, it goes straight to the landfill. It, they don't go through that and pick out recycling. There's very few... Um, instances where that does happen. Some, some businesses have contracts with specific waste haulers where they do that, but it's a very specialized facility that can, can actually do that sorting because of the potential contamination. Mm -hmm. But really, um, unless your municipality is telling you otherwise, what's going out of your house and into the trash cans is that's the end of the line. You put it in that trash can, it's going to the recycle or to the landfill. Okay. Um, and then we have several questions. So, um, and my understanding is, so we have someone who asked if Cook, Cook County offers curbside compost pickup to residents, but in most cases, isn't waste, waste is handled by your local municipality? That is exactly correct. So there are some municipalities that offer curbside compost pickup. So the food scraps and, and whatever is outlined in that specific pickup can be picked up at your curbside and taken to a composting facility. There's also a surprising number of composter companies that will actually pick it up on your own private contract from your home. So a lot of them will give you, you know, like a five gallon bucket and you put your food scraps in there and they come and pick that up. And then they have a composting facility that um, you, that they'll take them to and you can um, get, they'll get composted that way. Um, the county does not oversee any of the waste pickup or recycling pickup. We are more of a regulator and we collect the data. So we're the keepers of where are we at on our recycling um, rates? What do we need to do to help make our landfills last longer? Those types of things. Okay. 
All right, we're going to go through a few specifics and I think Jennifer addressed and actually you did as well about um, caps plastic water bottles other things put the cap back on put it in there don't squish it right. What so, about go ahead. Oh, so the reason for that is that at a lot of MRFs they actually use um, like infrared lasers that will sort those materials automatically. So once you squish them, it's more difficult for the machine to read the type. Also, if you're just throwing your cap in separately, the cap is still not going to be recycled. It'll only be recycled if it's on the bottle. What about beer bottles? Like, can you put a metal cap back on? So oh, no, I would not recommend doing that. Uh, some some MRFs, like some recyclers, will take those caps separately as a metal, but in general, glass should just be just the glass, no other caps put back on. Okay. Um, okay, as long as we're talking about glass, okay. um, specifically you specified kitchen glass. Mm -hmm. What about glass used, like I know you can't do windows, things like that. What about glass used in like skincare products? that would be similar to like a jelly jar okay. or a beer bottle <laughs> that would be of the same type of glass and you could if you can rinse it you can recycle those those specifically okay so same thing for peanut butter jars whether mm -hmm. it's glass or plastic if you can get it cleaned out mm -hmm. well enough okay yes and we want to always remember that we need to keep a balance with not wasting too much water with doing that as well so yeah. we want to make sure that 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 we're thinking about not just that that plastic, that recyclable. We're also thinking about other aspects of, of environmentalism. Yeah, with my my kids went to school in Arizona and California, respectively. So it's a tough line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So we are going to go to. Um. What about when we were talking about paper, you said um, lots of things like, you know, all the inserts that come in your Sunday paper mm -hmm. are recyclable, right? All of those mm -hmm. kinds of things. What about like photos or um, cash register receipts? So those both have coatings on them. So okay. the cash register receipts generally have a heat coating on them so that they can print on them and photographs are made with a, a treated paper. So those shouldn't go into our recycling, unfortunately. Okay. Um, what about, and this, this came up from several people. Okay. <laughs> I get confused with the number codes. Some things are numbered the same, but not all are recyclable. Can you please talk about that? Absolutely. So the numbers are sometimes a nice guideline for us to go by that um, a specific recycler is only going to take ones and twos. So that's water bottles and milk jugs, or they'll take all the numbers. And really what it comes down to is those are chemical codes. So they talk about the ingredients that are in those particular plastics. So if we actually think about it more from a, the respect of water bottles and milk jugs are pretty much always recyclable. So if you have a plastic that's similar to that, most likely that can be recycled. And then um, <laughs> there's been a lot of documentaries and stuff that have talked more about the, those plastic codes and um, to a certain extent, it was about recycling, but then to another um, extent, it was simply for chemists because that's what they needed to use. So in general, if you have milk jugs and water bottles and laundry soap containers, anything that has a, um, a neck, basically, even if it's a small one, that can go into the recycling bin. But I would check specifically with your recycling hauler or your municipality to make sure what they are actually recycling. That's going to be the best bet. I can't say everybody's going to take X, Y, or Z because unfortunately not all MRFs are the same. They have different types of equipment. Okay. And so this may fall in that too. When we talked about caps, somebody's asking about like, um, you know, the like the juice, a quart of orange juice that's in a carton and has a plastic lid. It, if yeah. you're, okay, yeah. Yeah, you can rinse that out and put the cap back on. 
carton recycling in, in this country has really come a long way and they have found ways to, to address that, even though that's more plastic that's kind of incorporated in with the paper. But there is also a really thin plastic coating on those. That's how they keep the liquid from seeping through the paper. So there's mechanisms, but so yeah, definitely put your cap back on that. And again, don't crush that. So just like with the water bottles, don't crush your cartons, just give them a rinse and you can put the cap back on. Okay. Um, paper that's been painted on. Like, I think this person might have a young artist in their home. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great until the fridge is full, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, we're not going to, that's, th think about trying to separate that from the paper, just like with the grease in a paper, or in, a, in a cardboard pizza box, being able to separate that easily without damaging the paper is a really difficult thing. And so paper recycling is, a well-oiled machine, but there are some still some hurdles to making sure that all of the materials are usable. Okay. To that end, things like paper towels should they cannot go into your recycling bin either. They are great for composting, though. <laughs> yes, depending on what you use them for. <laughs> but yeah, um, paperback books. You should check with your library if they're taking them. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, you would need to find a special program. There is a company called Better World Books that will take a lot of books and then resell them or donate them. So that might be a good um, avenue for you to explore. But in general, you don't want to put those into your recycling bin either. Yeah. Um, and I. Oh, or scarce.org. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I may have missed something while you were taught while I was trying to keep up with questions. Um, someone is saying you mentioned black cannot be recycled. So even if they are marked the number that my recycling hauler takes, can they be recycled? I know it's unfortunate, but again, it comes down to the sorting process. So because they use those means of um, personless sorting in the, the first step of it, the, the black material, which doesn't make sense to me because you could put your orange Tide bottle in there and it'll work. But um, I think it has to do with the density of the plastic. I can't see it. Okay. Um, and I know this was a um, <laughs> big thing 20 or 30 years ago. You couldn't recycle if you had an, a window envelope. You had to pull that paper. You had to pull that out first. I mean, you certainly can, but you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Same thing with a pasta box. You know, a lot of times they have that window on there. You're certainly welcome to do that, but it's not a requirement. <laughs> so similarly, um, like mailings that come with address stickers, um, do you need to peel that sticker off? No, you don't have to. You're definitely welcome to. If you wanted to make sure that your address doesn't go any further, that's that's an option. It's not a requirement. But you know, you also sometimes get those um, the the packets that they're um, different nonprofits are asking for donations that come with address labels for you to use. Those are not recyclable. Okay. Yeah. So please use them. <laughs> um. Tissue paper is not recyclable, right? It's been through the been through the process that five to seven times. So exactly. Can't go anymore. Um, I think this might be a bigger question, but um, would Cook County support county legislation to require commercial recycling, especially restaurants, to compost food scraps? <laughs> so that is a bigger question. And that definitely um, means that within our department and several other departments research and um, case studies need to be done and ultimately um, our chief sustainability officer can make rec recommendations to president Preckwinkle, but ultimately that is a decision that's made by quite a few people after doing proper due diligence right. um, at the county our department we definitely support composting 
at any level, it's a it's a really important piece of that waste hierarchy that we talked about. And um, we have done some case studies on that. And it's, you know, eternally a work in process or progress. Okay. Um... We have a question a few. So um, these two are kind of related. The one is don't plastic garbage bags prevent garbage from breaking down in the landfills? And the second part of that, similarly, if somebody has put a plastic, you know, whatever, water bottle, whatever, in their trash, does that interfere with things breaking down in a landfill? So landfills are tricky. <laughs> the, um, the trash really needs to stay contained until it gets there to the landfill. And that is why using trash bags is, is a pretty important piece of that. So we don't want the trash just flying out of the truck the whole way there. We already see enough of that kind of litter. And so we don't want to exacerbate that, right? But also the process at the landfill is that that trash is getting compacted every single day by large machinery. And sometimes that helps to open the bags, but it also is creating a really compacted um, and layered stratification to the landfill, which in and of itself really limits the decomposition of those materials, whether it's a plastic that in the most ideal situation would take a minimum of 500 years to decompose, or it's a banana peel, which in the perfect situation is going to decompose in two weeks. So there's a lot of complications to using landfills, but they are also, like I said, really, really well engineered to protect the environment around it. And that's a really important piece of that. And so in part, that's a really good reason for us to reduce, right? If we're sending less to the landfill, then there's gonna be less that is going to maybe never decompose. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was in school, just a, a little anecdote. They, uh, I was one of my conservation classes, they were talking about garbologists. So there's been a whole college classes that have looked at landfills and generating waste and storage of waste and how things decompose and they took a um, basically like an ice core that that you've heard of that we'll use like in the arctic to study the different layers of the ice and um, the different chemical makeups they did that at a landfill so straight down and they happened to drill and pull out a stack of newspapers that was from i believe the 40s or the 50s that were still perfectly intact they were still legible. They were not like, you know, they didn't have water stains on them. And they were just because everything was compacted on top of it. And especially once a landfill is full, it gets sealed. So really nothing gets in or out except for collection of leachate and methane. And so once it, that happens, that stuff really does stop decomposing or slows way down. Yeah. Okay. Um... We have somebody with a question that I think might, so there's a local um, organization like affiliation, Barrington Area Council of Governments does well water testing. Um, do you know if, if you take your well water in to be tested, do they test for leachates? I am not sure, but if they're testing for heavy metals, that is oftentimes found in leachate. So if they're testing for things like lead, that most likely would be a part of leachate. Leachate isn't just one thing. It's a, it's basically a soup of all the things that are in that landfill. And a leachate is going to look different from landfill to landfill, depending on the types of materials that are going into those landfills. So yeah, so if you're getting your well water tested, they are going to find things that would be part of that leachate. Okay. Um, I'm Looking for the date, I believe that BACOT has a well water testing um, date coming up. They had to push things back. Of course. <laughs> so I think that it may be um, May 25th. Um, 
which is a Tuesday. And I think, um, I think it might be at Citizens Park, which is just north of the library. Um, oddly, it's not on, I can't find it on their site. <laughs> My apologies. Um, let's see, somebody else. Again. You're correct. It's May 25th at Citizens Park. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I knew someone would know it. Um, okay, so we have a question about recycling light bulbs. Okay, so uh, do not put them in your curbside recycling, but oftentimes you can check for, um, we have three year-round household hazardous waste drop-off locations. One's in the city of Chicago, one's in Naperville, and one's in Rockford. All Illinois residents can utilize those facilities, but then also checking with your municipality to find out if there is going to be a community household hazardous waste drop off. Um, if it's just a single LED bulb that you've burned through, you can safely put that in your trash. If it's a fluorescent light, please don't put that in your trash. Use the use the facilities. Um, I think that also, uh, that also parallels in my brain my brain with batteries. So if it's that one or two double A's from your remote control, for example, those, as long as they're not rechargeable, if they're just regular old alkaline batteries, they can go into your trash can. We don't wanna to put tons of batteries in and we don't wanna put lithium ion batteries and those types in there. Um, those are actually a pretty dangerous fire hazard um, because you have to think things get compacted in, in trucks and I've actually um, heard about several fires from trucks mm -hmm. from that happening, so. I'm trying to think, I know years ago, I think Ikea took batteries. I don't know that they still do. I feel like Target was taking batteries for a while, right. but maybe not, maybe not anymore. Battery plus stores, um, the, you know, the, the best buys that are left, a lot of them have battery drop-offs. I would go to the, the swank.org in the recycling locator, Public Works, Barrington Public Works takes batteries, um, but I would check it because you can put in any kind of material if you're really looking to recycle something specific, they'll, they'll tell you, they'll show you to the ones. Also Earth 911, it, it's a huge database that lots of people add to, so you might be able to find something there. Um, Unfortunately, Cook County, well, fortunately, unfortunately, Cook County is very, very large, so I don't know all of the places. <laughs> yeah. Um, and did have, let me see if I can find this. Oh, um, while we're mentioning resources, um, someone said how to recycle dot info and it, okay. um, the numeral two, so how numeral two recycle dot info. Um, for recycling in stores for um, flimsy plastic wraps, mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. So films, and that would be your plastic grocery bags. That would be the wrapping around products that you purchase. And all of those things are absolutely recyclable, just not in our curbside for the reason of the getting caught in the machines. But there's, there's a lot of places that you can take those. I generally go to Kohl's, Kohl's department store. They usually have a big box not too far from the door and you can just drop them all there and they do get recycled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone is saying public works by Barrington High School will take lithium batteries, but you need to put them in between clear tape. So that they don't contact each other. Yeah. I would, okay. I would think. Okay. Okay. Um, let me, other notes. Oh, um, we have a note too about when you're recycling boxes, like all of the boxes that have been delivered mm -hmm. with your products, um, <laughs> we want to break those down, like flatten them first, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we need to remove the tape? Again, it's like the windows and those. Okay. You can. It's great if you do. It's not required that you do. Okay. Um, and should we try to avoid getting cardboard wet? Yes. So all of your paper, cardboard and all other papers, you do want to try to avoid getting those wet. So um, if you have one of those big um, curbside recycling, you put the, make sure the paper goes inside um, if you have to do extra stuff on the outside. If it's raining. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I 
think that I have gotten most of them. We got, um, we have a lot of people, Ikea still takes batteries, Best Buy takes batteries. Um, and there was one other place that came up in here. Oh, that was the Public Works, I told you that. Um, so uh, McHenry County Defenders has a green guide available on its website. Um, but I would say to go green Barrington, Jennifer, Jennifer links to, to quite a few of those resources. So Perfect. they're available for you. Um, folks, if you have any other questions, this is your last, last couple of minutes to get those in. Um, I have a couple of people who um, said, thank you, thank you. One who thank added, you. learned a lot and I will recycle better. So there you go. Thank you. Yes. Always nice to know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, juice boxes and pouches. Juice boxes, yes. If your if your municipality takes cartons, cartons. Okay. pouches, no. However, there are organizations like TerraCycle that you could potentially your school could get involved in being a collection site for those, and they do get recycled and also repurposed. They actually make a lot of products out of the chip bags and the you know Capri Sun pouches and those types of things that they collect. Okay. Um, I do know, I just heard recently that they're also doing PPE recycling. So that would be one of those special ones where you have to go through a special process to collect gloves and the disposable masks, but there are outlets for those. Unfortunately, they're not just in our recycling carts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Nike stores will take old tennis shoes to recycle. Well, North Face, I think. And I think there used to be in the Barrington Hills um, Public Works, there was a drop box for old shoes as well. There's a lot of those things. CDs? Um, those are a reuse, <laughs> a repurposed. Unfortunately, no, nope, we don't put those into our recycling carts. I've seen some really cool art projects with old CDs. Like, I have too, yeah. <laughs> they're breaking them and making a mosaic with them. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Same so. thing. I've, I've seen a lot of schools have done really beautiful mosaics with bottle caps as well. Yes. There's great ways to repurpose those in beautiful ways that will be long lasting. But um, yeah. Okay. Um, apparently a branch of Zappos takes shoe donations. Um, telephone books. That is recyclable. Okay, excellent. Um, and someone asking what is the pickup schedule for the orange bags? I don't know what the orange bags are. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, it's um, a program to collect textiles and we should check with your particular village. So Barrington has that program um, and it does seem to be a little hit or miss um, uh, and Hoffman Estates has it. So inquire with your village. I apologize for jumping in. Oh, um, and uh, simple recycling, I think is the name of it. Um, but again, check with your village. It is a good program, but it has been a little off on the schedule. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, I think too, Jennifer, I seem to recall at one of the give and takes that we did at the library, you had a source for recycling ballpoint pens. It was just a TerraCycle uh, box. Okay. So uh, although right now, uh, uh, giving day folks are having their collection of school supplies and that is um, this Wednesday morning and Saturday morning, I believe. If you look up Giving Barrington Giving Day, you can find it on Facebook and their website. And they're collecting school supplies and things that are gently used. Um, but when we did a collection of pens and pencils, we had a TerraCycle box. Um, we are collecting uh, prescription pill bottles that are clean, empty, caps mm -hmm. on, labels removed. Um, and we're collecting those for Go Green during the month of May. Um, and they're used in like third world countries. So we try to have collections when we can, um, but, uh, but yes, the pens and pencils were a TerraCycle program. Okay, great. Uh, so if any of those medicine bottles had pills in them still when you're cleaning them to donate, no, make no. sure, no, for, for, for residents, make sure that you're not just throwing those in the trash or, or down the toilet. There is, uh, most police stations will take those back. Some pharmacies and doctor's offices will as well. So we wanna make sure that we dispose of those properly too. Right, and BACOA um, in, um, or BACOG, excuse me. We have so many acronyms around here. 
but the Barrington Area Council of Governments has a very good program teaching people to not flush um, those things because they get into the water supply. So, and, and yes, um, yes, we promote that as well. So our police department will accept them. Perfect. And three people in a row just posted about prairie land disposal um, for gym shoes and for textiles. Um, a reminder for corrugated signs or campaign signs, if you still have any lingering, uh, Barrington Public Works will take those year round. And uh, cork, if you're not making uh, special projects with all your, your wine corks, um, you can take those to, and I just did, ran up on You can take those to the Barrington Public Works. You can take them to inside at South Barrington's Village Hall or to Prairie Land Disposal. Um, and that's one of our Go Green um, wonderful members who has organized that court collection as well as the um, campaign sign collection. Um, so we appreciate those villages and those businesses for letting us have drop-offs. I'm pretty sure it is that wonderful member who is spreading the wealth. I, so I don't bother her. <laughs> um, DSW takes shoes. Uh, do you have suggestions? Oh, it's all cork products. So if you have, if you have synthetic boards, or real, not, yeah, bullet yeah. boards that have not stood up to the year of working from home, right? Um, and someone asking, where can we drop off medicine bottles? Okay, and I can put that in the chat, but it's one five zero five Lakeshore Drive South, and that's for the month of May. And then we'll pause and we'll do it again in October. We just don't have the facilities to do it year round. So, um, but for the entire month of May, 1505 Lakeshore Drive South, we will have a bin for the medicine bottles. Okay. Um, and then uh, then we'll wait and you have to store them at your house and we'll do it again in the fall. <laughs> Fair, okay. All right. Um, and yeah, does anyone know if anyone's asked local restaurants to collect corks? I know I personally did at one point, we did a bunch of um, take and make projects at the library and I went around with paper bags and got corks from. And uh, when they have their uh, wine walk, we've tried to advertise quite a bit on the issue, um, but yeah. any help in spreading the word on any of the programs is much appreciated. And I know that every time we have one of these programs, um, there's questions that come up again and again and and new questions, you know, probably when we hit leave the program, I'll have a question to myself five minutes later. So definitely email Kate or email me. Um, look at that Swank website um, because there's always going to be, you know, follow up questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. All right, folks. Thank you all very much for being with us. Thank you, Kate. It was very interesting, very informative. Didn't know garbologist was a job. <laughs> I don't think I'm leaving librarianship, but good to know. So, folks, thank you for joining us, and we will ask you to step away. We need to have a quick, quick follow up after this meeting. So, if we could ask you folks to step out, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs>